welcome to new discussion on radar images interpretation and applications. And as mentioned in earlier in discussion that uh, SAR interferometry we will be discuss after this. Uh, first we need to understand the power images and uh, therefore, I thought that I will have discussion on this and then we can go for other discussions. So, basically when uh, 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 when the images are recorded um, especially the radar one which I am uh, discussing uh, that electromagnetic uh, magnetic energy in a radar pulse when it meets the surface uh, basically depend on four major factors. So, when the satellite or sensors sends the energy or a pulse radar pulse to the towards the ground and then uh, the surface or the features which are present on the ground uh, will behave differently based on the these four main factors. First of all the attitude of the surface, how the surface is and uh, how it is oriented. We have, we have seen in case of uh, uh, hilly terrain and uh, slant range distortions that uh, there might be shadow issues that a part of the hill is not getting at all any signal any energy from microwave sensors <laughs> or there might be two other distortions one is the force shortening and another one is layover that uh, the base of uh, the hill is getting first registered and then peak or top of the mountain is getting later. So, that will bring force shortening and uh, it is just opposite to this that the top is getting first registered and base is getting later and that may be the layover. So, attitude of the surface which is being illuminated by radar pulses plays very important role in the our power images or SAR images. So, attitude of the surface orientation basically how it is oriented, in which direction it is oriented and how the slopes and other things are there. Second is the roughness. If a surface is very rough and heterogeneity is there of the surface, then it will be recorded completely differently and if it is not there, it will be recorded differently. So, sometimes uh, uh, there might be effects of soft surface uh, features on surface and that may get recorded also. If I take example of a water body, sometimes water body may be very calm, roughness is not there and therefore, it will be recorded completely differently than a water body is having lot of waves. Same thing is also in which wavelength we are uh, using or recording the data because different sensors may be having S band utilization of S band, C band or X band. The most common one which we have been discussing is C band. So, what happens that uh, the wavelength and this uh, microwave uh, images are also dependent on wavelength. Polarization we have also discussed whether it is a vertical, vertical polarization, horizontal or a, a mixed one and also the depression angle of the radar that uh, will also play important role while images radar images or SAR images are getting recorded. So, these variables will play their very important role in radar images. Now, the fourth main factor is the electrical properties of the surface that is a dielectric constant which is a complex thing of surface material. A rock, a dry soil or sand and water or vegetation all will have different dielectric constant and therefore, their electrical properties will influence the recordings in the radar images. So, that also plays very important role. So, why we are discussing these factors? 
is because when we get these power images or SAR images, the inter while doing the interpretations, we have to remember these factors. Then only a correct interpretation or utilization or application of such images can happen. Now, materials dielectric constant controls the proportion of the radar energy reflected by a material and that penetrated into it. Earlier in the discussion also in previous discussion, I mentioned that uh, old courses of Saraswati river were discovered in dry soil conditions or dry sand condition in Rajasthan because it is possible that these uh, waves, microwaves can penetrate into dry soil to a large uh, depth. So, this uh, uh, the because of different dielectric constant. So, materials dielectric constant basically controls the proportion of radar energy reflected by the material and the penetrating into it. So, if it is getting reflected, then only it will reach to the sensor and if it is getting absorbed, then it will not reach to the sensor and therefore, we will not be able to record that thing. So, in dry sand, the energy in the initial part in the from top uh, soil or sand, it gets reflected and get recorded, but as soon as it encounters moisture or water, then the behavior is completely different and it is absorbed and you do not get the recordings. So, materials with high dielectric constant such as metals and waters and water are excellent reflector and absorb very little energy and therefore, that is why I said that surface roughness of water also plays very important role. So, there also it will play a very important role. So, the energy which is uh, not absorbed gets reflected. So, lower the dielectric constant, more energy is absorbed and uh, that can and re emerge giving potential for penetration beneath the surface. So, what happens that in case of dry sand that it is having low dielectric constant and uh, the energy uh, lower uh, lower the dielectric constant the more energy is absorbed and giving the potential. So, this will give potential for penetrating the waves and then therefore, in the uh, dry sands it can penetrate. So, dielectric constant is not a simple function of wavelength because in different uh, uh, bends. Uh, it, it will behave def, uh, differently, but not uh, only depends on wavelength, but also it varies relatively for uh, rocks and soils over the range of commonly used wavelengths. So, different rocks, soils and water content, moisture content that will allow to behave differently because all these will have different dielectric constant. So, materials with high dielectric constant such as metals and water are excellent reflectors. This is exploited to uh, for radar images for georeferencing purposes. So, metal reflectors are kept when data is being acquired by the satellites or we call also call corner reflectors. And therefore, the reflection is maximum from these reflectors which are uh, you know like a, a triangle kind of thing open triangle. So, whatever the signal microwave signal which is coming from the sensor hits uh, these metal reflectors corner reflectors and because they are having a high dielectric constant they reflect back the maximum energy. So, in your power images these corner reflectors will have a very bright signature and therefore, it becomes very easy to identify them and uh, when once the location of these corner reflectors is known through DG, uh, DG and, uh, or GNSS or DGNSS, then these locations can be used 
to georeference an image. So, the property of uh, different metals or water can be exploited. Sometimes it, when it is not possible to have corner reflectors, but if we are having calm water, then that can also be used if a small water body and that it reflects the maximum microwave energy, then that can also be used as a GCP ground control points for georeferencing because it is uh, going to absorb very less energy. And the low, lower dielectric constant, the more energy is absorbed and can re-emerge giving the potential for penetration breathe the surface. So, this, uh, this characteristics prevails in the dry sand. Where water is not there, high di dielectric constant is not there, the moisture is not there and the energy is absorbed and can re-emerge. So, continuously you are getting and it, it is allowing the energy or the microwaves to penetrate uh, through this dry sand. And uh, you know the old courses of Saraswati river where when uh, the boring or drilling was done and uh, the uh, you know the water was found there and it penetrated very uh, many meters 15 to 20 meters in dry sand. So, that is uh, the complex dielectric constant can be exploited differently. High dielectric constant can be applied, uh, applied for uh, creating or using GCPs, corner reflectors as GCPs and uh, this uh, uh, you know low dielectric constant material uh, are sometimes useful to find out uh, moisture or water beneath them. Now, uh, these uh, dry soils and rocks which we are ju have we just mentioned have dielectric constant in the range of 2 to 8, which is enough to permit penetration of a significant portion of incident radar into dry material to depth of even up to 25 meter. In desert conditions, you do not have moisture in the sand and therefore, uh, because of a, a very little uh, dielectric constant ranging from 3 to 8 which will allow the penetration and therefore, as soon as it encounters the water body then uh, it is a different situation and uh, dielectric constant would be high and then you get a ref a reflection from there. So, you can and uh, that is the big one of the biggest advantage of using remote sen uh, active microwave data is that in dry sand condition, dry soil condition it can penetrate into the ground. So, penetration of microwave signals is only possible where the topographic surface is radar is smooth. Radar is smooth means say like in desert conditions. If uh, there are lot of undulations though the soil may be dry or sand may be completely dry, still it may not work. So, you need a completely flat terrain as it is mentioned is a radar is smooth, then only you can have the success. So, in desert conditions where you do not have many dunes, sand dunes, terrain sometimes is very flat, not many uh, eolian features their radar remote sensing can work to find out water bodies which might be even at greater depth even up to 25 meter. This as in the example I have given of Saraswati courses and in other countries also this has been used. Now, as say also mentioned that water is a water is a substance which has got the highest or maximum dielectric constant about 80 and that is the greatest cause of variations in the parameters of rocks and soils in their moisture content. That plays very important role because soil at different depths may have different content of water or moisture conditions and therefore, the soils will have more influence. Uh, because of dielectric constant, because of availability of moisture and therefore, they will get different recordings 
in the images or radar images or power images. So, as moisture content increases, the dielectric constant also increases and in a roughly linear fashion. However, the dielectric constant of water increases as wavelength increases. So, different wavelengths if you use then you will have a different uh, or as uh, longer the wavelength you go the dielectric constant value will also increase. Generally as I have said that the uh, radar remote sensing is being done either using C band, S band or X band. So, depending on which band data C band is the most common we will also see later uh, of a different this we have already discussed with different sensors, but when an, a proper time comes we will again see that one. So, this uh, dielectric constant for example, in the soil some of the incident radar energy is able to penetrate in the soil surface resulting in less back scattered intensity. So, absorption is there as you can see that some part is penetrating. Whereas, wet soil that means high moisture content and that means a, a large reflection because water content is more. So, the large differences in electrical properties between water and air results in higher backscattered radar intensity and you get because the images which we see SAR images are nothing but the intensity images the backscattered intensity image and therefore, these things we must understand to identify different objects in the SAR images. So, if you are getting darker signatures that is intensity is low that might be due to absorptions of microwave energy. If you are getting very bright signatures that might be due to the reflection because of high dielectric constant because of high moisture content like this scenario. There might be situation where entire energy is reflected in just one direction that is like flooded soil. So, radar is specular, specularly reflected off the water surface resulting in low back scattered intensity. The flooded area appears dark in SAR images. So, if a specular reflection happens then even a water body will also get registered as black because less in uh, less back scattering that means in intensity image it will have less value and therefore, if we assign uh, a gray shades accordingly then we these areas might appear as black because of specular reflection. So, dielectric constant except for its effect on penetration dielectric constant is a minor factor in controlling the tone and texture of radar images. These are dominated primarily by slope effects and by surface roughness. So, surface roughness is one of the factors which we have already discussed plays very important role. Roughness the surface roughness uh, in a perfectly smooth surface of a material with high dielectric constant acts a mirror to the radar and it would be uh, it would be to all forms of radiation. So, a, it may behave a water body may behave as a complete mirror because water is having dielectric constant a smooth surface a calm water may behave like a mirror. So, being directed to side of the platform Radar pulses meet horizontal surface at angle acute angle and are reflected away from the antenna at the same angle without being scattered. And therefore, the you see a mirror effect this specular reflection basically results in a totally black signature for a smooth surface. So, if uh, the entire energy is getting reflected and in a direction where we do not have the a receiver or a situation then these will appear as black. Now, the surface uh, smoothness or roughness in respect to radar depends on the wavelength, 
because if uh, wavelength is long, the uh, this uh, smoothness or surface will behave differently. Whereas if it is short, it will behave differently. So incident angle not only that depends on wavelength, but also the incident angle of the microwave energy. As shown here, that uh, we may have a uh, reflection like a diffuse reflection, a specular reflection or a corner reflection. And corner reflection that means the maximum energy is going back to the radar. So, these corner reflectors, the metal corner reflectors are used that is why they are designed in a manner that the maximum microwave energy is reflected back immediately to the end antenna or receiver and therefore they will appear very bright signatures in your radar images. But there can be other diffuse uh, reflector in case of uh, uh, your uh, dry sand or uh, maybe uh, dry vegetation. There may be a very smooth surface like this then you may have a specular reflection. So, a smooth surface or a specular reflector will tend to reflect the microwave energy only in one direction, not in all direction and therefore, it do not goes back to the, sens uh, to the sensor or receiver and this surface will be recorded as a dark signature. Though the reflection is very good, but a specular reflection. So, a smooth surfaces tend to appear very dark in radar images because all the back scatter is directed away from the sensor. So, all the time this intensity image cannot be just interpreted like this. There might be reflection of different kinds, diffuse, specular or maybe because of corner effect. So, a rough uh, that is Lambertian or diffused surface as we, we see here because of surface roughness on the surface will scatter radiation in all directions as you can also see here. And objects like buildings with the right angle are corner reflectors. So, if they are coming in that kind of right angle situation with reference to your receiver. Um, then they are they become a corner reflector, very good reflector. And right angles to the corner reflectors cause the microwave energy to bounce off both the surface and side of the feature and direct the majority of microwave signal back to the sensor. If uh, somebody is not having metal uh, corner reflectors, but if uh, because of uh, these buildings, if uh, uh, such situation is there, these two can be used as a GCPs for georeferencing radar images. Because otherwise, a georeferencing of radar images becomes difficult. People mainly rely for georeferencing on orbital parameters rather than using GCPs. If we use the GCPs like these corner reflectors, may be metal or may be because of some building uh, artificial man made structures then our georeferencing can improve significantly. Now, roughness different examples are given here. What we see that uh, a flat surface is there, then you are having a forest, you are having a uh, cropland, different surfaces, different roughness, mountains will have their own appearance, rough surface here which you see here or city which is providing might provide corner reflection. So, in radar images how these will be recorded? If it is a flat surface and a specular reflection is happening that means uh, the back no back scattering is reaching towards the receiver then you will get a complete dark signatures in the image. But if uh, you get a, uh, uh, this uh, uh, because of uh, roughness diffuse uh, reflection may be because of forest in that means back scattering in all direction and therefore, you will have a something like gray and dotted kind of uh, signatures in your radar image. Whereas, a cropland might be more smoother than forest 
and it will have recordings accordingly. Where in case of mountains you have seen because of shadow, because of layover, because of foreshortening, you may get recording something like this. Depending on the orientation of hill with reference to the sensor. If a uh, if surface is rough, then you may not get complete uh, uh, flat surface, but a rough surface, small undulations are there then it will not get a, a specular reflection, but it may be a mixed kind of diffuse and specular and therefore, you will get uh, the recordings in the mid range not black not uh, full reflection corner reflection, but in the middle may be grey kind of situation. If you get a corner reflector as you can see here that the wave is coming going back and then going back immediately. And through this back scattering and therefore, they will appear very bright signatures as you can see here. So, the surface roughness plays very very important role in case of radar images. So, flat smooth surface generally appear black as you have seen in the first example or dark because of all the energy is being reflected away from the sensor. A calm water body will appear dark in radar images because it is having specular reflection. A forest canopy, the second example here is an example of rough or diffuse surface, diffuse reflection and will appear grey in color or grey shades in with varying texture in your radar images. Whereas, rough, 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 rough surface scatter more energy in all directions including back to the sensor and appear brighter like a forest example might be there or rough surface this example. And surface roughness is described as a function of wavelength depends on wavelength definitely and the angle of incident of incoming radiation how it is located with the reference to incident angle that matters a lot especially in hilly terrain like this example where mountains are there. And depending also the reference also depending on the wavelength and angle of incident to a surface may produce different backscatter. Now, if I take example of uh, plants trees in different bands how it behaves because now we are changing the wavelength but the objects are keeping same. So, this is L band whereas, wavelength is 23.5 centimeter C band the second one middle example is C band 5.8 most common used in radar remote sensing may be X band that is 3 centimeter. So, here in the L is having maximum wavelength X is having minimum length in this example. So, what we see here that the white arrows are showing the back, uh, back scattering. So, more back, back scattering is occurring in case of long wavelength and less back scattering is occurring in case of X band or short wavelength. And of course, the C band is in the middle that is why this band is most commonly used currently. So, longer wavelength bands may be P L bands which are having 100 to 15 uh, centimeter can penetrate forest canopy and reflect off the standing tree trunks. And this is the example of L band in the first scenario because we are having uh, the uh, wavelength between 100 to 15 meter. Therefore, the longer wavelength can penetrate into tree, they can even record the information or reflection by the tree trunk. So, if uh, an application requires uh, uh, you know investigation in a forested land, then user should look for L band radar images rather than C band or X band because of penetration capabilities 
which is depending on the wavelength. Longer the wavelength, higher the penetration. Now, these wavelengths are used to detect amount of wood in a forest and estimate forest biomass. Shorter wavelength relatively compared to L band, the C band which is a middle range is 5.8 centimeter and also X band which is quite close 3 centimeter are used to detect smaller features like twigs or leaves. So, for forest purposes all three can be used, but if I want to uh, you know get the information about the availability of wood that is trunk part and uh, estimate the forest biomass then the best is L band. But if I want to uh, uh, record or get the information about uh, leaves or uh, small branches, twigs then I may use band C or X in case of vegetation. Longer the microwave wavelength, the greater the penetration of vegetation canopy that I have already told you this is what it is reflected. You see that the uh, L band that is long wave uh, microwave is reaching and getting back scattered whereas C band is not penetrating to that extent as L band and relatively X band is highly penetrating only from the top part it is getting back scattered. Now, these uh, radar images have certain characteristics that are fundamentally different from images obtained by optical sensors. This I have been telling the radar images interpretations and analysis of radar images is completely different than images which are coming from optical sensors. For example, Landsat, Spot, IRS, Cartosat, etc. These characteristics or specific characteristics are consequence of imaging radar technology and which are related to radiometry that is speckle, texture or geometry. So, these are different uh, uh, product altogether radar images. So, when using these images or analyzing these images one must keep in mind the fact that even the image is presented as an analog product on a photographic paper or on a screen, the radar sees the scene in a very different way from the human eye or an optical sensor. Because as we have discussed that because of dielectric constant, because of the surface roughness, it records differently the same material. Uh, or same objects are recorded differently if they are having different surface roughness. I gave the example of water that calm water of a lake or a sea will get different recorded recording then it will calm water will reflect maximum in a back is may be specular may get recorded and uh, completely differently as direct objects. And the gray labels basically the labels are supposed to record the energy, strength, intensity, but uh, because of certain reasons sometimes even a uh, specular reflection can get um, very low recording or low gray levels. So, gray levels of the scenes are related to the relative strength of the microwave energy back scattered by the landscape elements or objects of the ground, but again not all the time. So, that one has to remember what kind of reflection it is there for different objects. Now, let us see some examples of uh, these radar images and the first one for the same area having different uh, uh, see here the first one is from Sentinel 2 and this is of course, not radar image this is a uh, band combination 432. These are multispectral images. The next one is also multispectral image, but the bottom one is the Allos pulsar image, which is a radar image. And as you can see, that uh, these two top two examples from Sentinel 2 and Landsat are giving though colors, but only surficial information. For the same area, when we see the radar image, 
from Alos Pulsar. Alos is the name of the satellite, Pulsar is the sensor, microwave sensor. We see a lot of details even about the drainage system or some geological structures because of different rocks might be present which is completely missing or hardly seen in top two images A and B. So, this structure is remal structure which you are seeing here which is not clearly seen in these two optical images. So, while the structure is barely noticeable as a bright circular feature in a homogeneous low contrast sandy terrain in both sentinel and landsat images. Because this area is covered with sand and top surface in optical images is hindering that uh, uh, structure, remal structure to be seen. But when this dry soil is there top of the surface, but in radar can penetrate and therefore, it is possible to see that uh, remal structure very clearly in radar image. So, it is clearly visible in the microwave image due to the penetration capabilities of radar signals in desert sand. That is the advantage of using radar images. So, what people do nowadays, they employ both, they employ optical images and also radar images, these power images or SAR images and can create a, a you know a combined product or diffuse product, merge product to get the colors from the surface multispectral information and as well as depth information of a dry area from the radar images and the products can be much more useful than individual one. Here also few examples and uh, examples with the po different polarization because that might be a question what happens with different polarization. So, uh, the sentinel one example of uh, this is C band, horizontal vertical polarization, this is the first example. For the same area, sentinel BV polarization, vertical vertical polarization. The pulsar L band allows pulsar, we have seen the example in the previous image, this is L band, whereas sentinel 1 is having C band, pulsar L band is HB and then pulsar he was having HH polarizations. And when this is a close up from the C band that is the sentinel of this part which you are seeing here in the E figure. As you can see that the polarization will bring different scenarios or different images. So, when the data is acquired, data is acquired with different polarizations. So, if one polarization is not giving those kind of details, one can explore the other polarization images. As shown here, two sensors and uh, both sensors are having different options available. So, if I take the first two images A and B, one is HB, second one is BB. In case of pulsar L band, HB and HH. So, radar images with different wavelengths and polarizations reveals diff geological structures may be little differently. Bright areas in radar images indicate rocky surface means high back scattering, coarse grain material whereas the dark areas are fine grain materials more absorption and which is common in desert conditions in eolian or in fluvial deposits. The, the superiority of L band that is in C and D relatively revealing complete circular, uh, circularity of that structure which compared to uh, top 1 A and B. Here this circular structure is, is much more clear as compared to C band. As I have been mentioning that, uh, uh, that the the purpose should be known if for vegetation is a different scenario. For dry areas, 
different wavelengths, different polarization. So, if we see that uh, compared to sentinel, this uh, pulsar images that is L band is showing much more better signatures. However, HV is showing little differently and HS polarization is showing differently, the same structure. So, this is due to this uh, because uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, C, uh, C band is not showing as clear as L band because due to the longer wavelength which L is having. This we have seen that uh, what L is have L band is L band is having your 23.5 and C band is having 5.8 this one has to remember. So, here because of longer wavelength the penetration is much more and uh, which is capable of penetrating sand deeper than the shorter wavelength. See if the structures are visible on surface then even optical images can reveal them very nicely. But sometimes when these geological structures or maybe some other structures if they are hidden because of sand in desert conditions then radar images can be very very useful because these can penetrate through and dry sand. So, longer wavelength for example, here the pulsar is capable of penetrating more as compared to shorter wavelength 5.8 that is C band. So, superiority of the shorter wavelength in revealing the radial pattern drainage network uh, and other things are better here as compared to pulsar. So, both are useful one if uh, all are available this is E part which is being discussed here showing the drainage network very clearly here. So, for identifying drainage network which is very close to the surface might be then C band uh, C band data uh, radar data is more useful as compared to pulsar, but when uh, we want to reveal the underneath underneath the sand dry sand uh, structures then L band might be useful. If all data is available then a combined product a diffuse a fuse product can also be created. Now, as I was saying fusion of images. So, this is that example is here that the A is a true color image color com, uh, composition band uh, 432 have been arranged in RGB that is A part again of a desert area and V is the fused image of Landsat 8 that has shown at 8 uh, as A with pulsar horizontal horizontal polarization. So, when you merge these two this kind of product can be generated which is much more informative much more useful than using individual product like Landsat separately or uh, pulsar HS separately. Similarly, in uh, this uh, MNF image transformation a uh, this uh, lens at 8 and uh, multi spectral pulsar uh, image which you are seeing in C and sentinel and pulsar can also be stacked together with 3 polarizations VV, HH and HV and this, this uh, combination two radar images three different polarizations can reveal much more than any other three examples. So, this is clearly revealing large parts of morphology of the Riemel structure. Now, this is de depends on the location area to area. Therefore, if uh, options or lot of data from different sensors radar and optical sensors are available, one should try to create these fuse product, merge product and see and assess that which one is giving the better results. This cannot be standard for all the areas for all the images or all combinations, no. Only in this example this has worked very well. So, fusion and transformation that is color transformation or RGB transformation of multi spectral and radar data can reveal lot of structures in this example Riemel structures and combining this spectral and roughness 
can change or enhance the visibility of uh, the subsurface features or near surface structures also. And this is what you see here. One more example and that radar applications of radar images for moisture content in flood analysis. As I have said that in case of flood, the water is uh, uh, calm and therefore there can be a specular reflection and they, therefore the area may appear completely dark, the flooded area and this is what you are seeing. The left side and uh, that is the pre-flood scenario and this is the post-flood and large area is inundated and appearing as dark. See the role of or application of radar remote sensing is much more in case of cloudy conditions that we have discussed because you know that the microwave uh, or that wavelength whether it is a L, X or C or whatever are larger than your uh, constituents of atmosphere and therefore uh, these can penetrate through the clouds very easily or aerosols and they play very important role in such studies when you are having clouds. So, optical remote sensing will not work, may not work during floods. Whereas, radar remote sensing, it is not affected because of cloud or aerosols or any other thing can work very well and reliably the inundated areas can be mapped very accurately, very successfully. So, that is the best uh, uh, part of radar remote sensing which allows the penetration Another advantage is in daytime or night time, any time can these images can be acquired. Whereas for optical remote sensing, you need a, a reflection and a, you need the illumination source that is the sun. So, images of this are radar set 1 of Canada of uh, Cambodia during the monsoon season or monsoon flooding which you see here. Of course, the first image is the pre-flood that is the dry season or Mekong river which only the river is appearing dark, it is having water but here a lot of the area which got inundated is appearing dark. After a, a, a severe rain significant flooding occurred in this uh, Mekong river and of course, the second image appears flooded and uh, black due to due to specular reflection of the surface. So, as we have been discussing that uh, water uh, is having very high dielectric constant though it can reflect the maximum microwave energy, but uh, because of calmness smooth surface specular reflection can occur and water may appear completely dark calm water will appear dark and this is what you are seeing here. So, uh, one has to interpret images accordingly and then of course, uh, and the applications and uh, their applications can be done very successfully. So, this brings to the end of uh, a brief discussion on basically how to use, how to interpret or analyze radar images or we say intensity images or also sometimes are called power images. So, this way uh, we can understand these images which are completely different than what you see in optical images. So, this brings to end of this discussion. Thank you very much. Music